Hello there. So here's a fact. Unfortunately, a good percentage of students taking their practical exam are not going to be able to attempt all questions in the given time. My name is Mumshad Manambat and we are going through the Kubernetes certification course. And in this lecture, we will discuss how to effectively manage your time during the certification exam. And this is applicable to all practical exams of this kind. As of this recording, you get two or three hours to complete the Kubernetes certification exams. The duration of the administrator's exam is three hours and the application developer's exam is two hours. You have 24 questions in the administrator's exam and 19 in the application developer's exam. Now that is not sufficient to complete all the questions. So it is important to manage your time effectively to pass the exams. During the exam, you are presented with a set of questions, some of which may be very easy, some that makes you think a little bit, and some that you have no clue about. Hopefully not too many of that. Now you don't have to get all of it right. You only need to solve enough to gain the minimum required percentage to pass the exam. So it is very important to attempt all of the questions. You don't want to get stuck in any of the early tough questions and not have enough time to attempt the easy ones that come after. You have the option to attempt the questions in any order you like. So you could skip the tough ones and choose to attempt all the easy ones first. Once you're done, if you still have time, you can go back and attempt the ones you skipped. So that was the first and most important tip. Attempt all the questions. The second tip is to not get stuck on any question, even for a simple one. For example, you're attempting to solve a question that looks simple. You know what you're doing, so you make an attempt. The first time you try to execute your work, it fails. You read the error message and realize that you had made a mistake, like a typo. So you go back and fix it and run it again. This time you get an error message, but you're not able to make any sense out of it. Even though that was an easy question and you knew you could do it, if you're not able to make any sense out of the error message, don't spend any more time troubleshooting or debugging that error. Mark that question down for review later, skip it and move on to the next question. Now, I know that urge to troubleshoot and fix issues, but this is not the right time for it. Leave it to the end and do all the troubleshooting you want after you have attempted all the questions. So here is how I would go about it. Start with the first question. If it looks easy, attempt it. Once you solve it, move over to the next. If that looks easy, attempt it. Once that is finished, go over to the next. If that looks hard and you think you will need to read up on it, mark it down and go over to the next. The next one looks a bit difficult, but you think you can figure it out. So give it a try. First attempt, it fails. You know what the issue is, so you try to fix it. The second attempt, it fails again, and you don't know what the issue is. Don't spend any more time on it, as there are many easy questions waiting ahead. Mark it down for review later and go over to the next. Follow the same technique to finish as many questions as possible. The third tip is to be really good with YAML. You must spend enough time practicing your definition files in advance. If for each question you're having to go through each line of your YAML file and fix the indentation errors, you're not going to be able to make it through all questions. You shouldn't have to do that. If you're doing it, then that means there is something wrong with your approach, the way you're copying stuff over maybe. Your YAML files don't have to look pretty because nobody is going to look at them. I'm guessing that the work is evaluated automatically, so only the end result is evaluated and not how pretty your YAML files are. So even if your file looks like this one on the right, whereas it should have looked like this one on the left, 
It's still fine as long as the structure of the file is correct and that you have the right information in the file and you're able to create the required Kubernetes object using the file. For that, you need to get your YAML basics right. If you're a beginner, check out the coding exercises at CodeCloud that help you practice and get good with YAML. And finally, remember to use alias names or shortcuts such as PO for pods, RS for replica sets, deploy for deployments, SVC for services, NS for namespaces, netpol for network policies, PV for persistent volumes, and PVCs for persistent volume claims, SA for service accounts, etc. These are not major time savers, but can help you save few seconds here and there and accumulating to few additional minutes towards the end. Well, that's it for this lecture. If you have any more tips, feel free to leave a comment below or let me know. Thank you for listening, and I wish you good luck with your exams. And before you go, don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more videos to learn complex technology in a simple way by solving fun coding challenges on real environments right in your browser. Visit codecloud.com.